Mercury Theater Podcast. What, that toothless racist? Not a hundred years of prohibition would force me to buy the swill from that man. It's a quarter of the cost of the other stuff, and it gets people where they want to go in half the time. Too rich for my blood. I can hear everything you're saying. I ain't toothless neither. Yeah, I mean, he started the shooting, and he had two goons with him. Too late, Neil. You're telling me that every one of your friends at the barn got killed? No, we done buried them at the church. Good Christian burial. I want names, all of them. Then boy, why ain't you over at your place with the wife? There ain't no way he's got protection. And we're half of it. I pay off all the people in between. Who might you be? Oh, allow me to introduce myself. Oh my, it is great to make your acquaintance, Howard. Any associate of Neil's is an acquaintance of mine. If Howard says it's done, it's done, boss. Lord help me. <laughs> we'll get you a few suits, Mr. Neil. Don't you worry. We may be able to work out a deal. Fine, fine. Enjoy your night, gentlemen. Well, we plan to. Thank you, Addie. Now, let go of my wife. What'll it be tonight, boys? The usual tonight? Let's get some cigar rounds over here, would you, Tuts? What's the name of that joint again? You keep bringing that hooch around, and we'll always have a place for you here at Crazy Addie's. Shall we? Coming soon, June 28th. I'm Josie Herman. I'm Casey Wayland. And I'm Michael Herman. And you're listening to the Mercury Mercury Theater Theater Podcast. Podcast. Welcome. Before we proceed to my interview with the producers of The Call of the Void, I wanted to get a tiny bit of housekeeping out of the way. Some people mentioned that they couldn't find Adventure Academy, which published last month. That is likely because it was posted as the pilot episode found at the very beginning of the season. If you go back, you should be able to find it as episode number one. Anyway, I have the pleasure of introducing a couple I am extremely jealous of, the producers of the winning podcast of a multitude of awards that I couldn't begin to start listing off, The Call of the Void, Josie and Michael. Welcome to Mercury Theater Podcast. Thanks. Thank you. So good to be here. Yep. First off, let's let's get one thing out of the way. Michael and Josie, both voice actors for Call of the Void? That's correct. Yes. What other roles do you play for the for Call of the Void? Like do you write it? Do you, like who does what? Yeah, we wear a lot of hats. So <laughs> a lot of hats. I do play the voice of Topher. <laughs> and I play the voice of Etsy. Yeah, but we are also co-showrunners. So that means that we write it together and then we produce it together. So we're finding actors and we're casting. And then Josie directs. Mm-hmm. And then we actually even sound design it ourselves. Yep. So we mix it and then we sound design. Um, and then we do social media ourselves too. So basically we have no money and uh, <laughs> so so we do everything ourselves. Right. Uh, although you know what we have also a very specific vision and so that's, yeah you know by the time you we like, like to say that's the real reason that's the real reason. yeah um, we like to like by the time you articulate it to somebody you kind of could have done some of the stuff yourself you know because you want it to be just so yeah that's that's really cool and how do you guys know each other well well, well we're married we're married yeah so we met at Eastern Michigan University in the theater department yeah. and um, we just stayed really close and um, in touch since then and um, yeah um, Michael actually moved out to California for a little while so we were we were sort of like just friends but like very close friends and then yep. uh, then he came back and we started dating and we got married and so it was and actually the rest of the story. The rest of the history. We got married between the seasons, actually. So oh, yeah, season yeah. one happened, and then we got yeah. married. And then... So if you notice, my name changes. Yes. I, you know, I'm like Josie Eli Lipchinsky, and then now I'm Josie Eli Herman. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone will notice. Well, yeah. awesome. That's a. I. It had been so long since I heard heard uh, season one, and then season two is in the process of coming out. Which by the time that this comes out, this will have been it'll uh, season two will have been concluded. Completely. Yeah. So, yeah. How how far are you into production? Like, are you done? Like, are you like washing your hands? You, you like, what, what, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Well, we do have what we call skeletons, which is. Um, all of the dialogue is put in, most of the sound design is put in, but by the time you, you put all the skeletons down and then you start to go revisit the episodes, you find things that you know, you realize just don't work. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, that moment just isn't how I imagined it was going to be on paper. Mm-hmm. And so each week we do have a bit of a panic attack slash creative session where we make sure that everything works and there's as few plot holes as little, mm-hmm. like all the character motivations are as crystal clear yeah. as we absolutely can. Well- Congratulations to the both of you, Mazel Tov. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, um, 
season one, when did that, when did that come out? It came out last year. So it, uh, um, what was it? March? It, or, it, uh, it ended, yeah, it was around March, I think. Yeah. Or sorry, it started in, uh, we started releasing in January, January and then February. it went to, I believe the beginning of March. Um, so, so yeah, it's been, it's been a year since the release of season one and now we're doing season two and yeah. it's set a year conveniently it's set a year later <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> a year has I gone did, by i did notice that in the in episode one it establishes it's a it's a year later mm-hmm. yeah yep, cool. absolutely so what inspired both of you to get into podcasting did one of you take the lead on that? Sure, yeah. Well, so I think a long, long time ago, we s- listened to Rabbits, um, yeah. and that show kind of blew our mind. We never thought of the audio medium in that kind of way before, mm-hmm. and it was just sort of like, wow, this is so narrative and mm-hmm. so exciting and suspenseful and uh, just a great mystery to it and good characters, and we thought, wow, you know, is there, can we do any kind of show that would be, you know, similar um, or something in that kind of like vein, you know? Um and we also, I guess, we also heard many other like good shows too uh, that also sort of inspired that journey as well. Like things like, um, well, like uh, We're Alive. I mean, that was another one that we heard incredibly immersive, yeah. and that one's been going on. Well, the, your listeners will know because you just heard, but uh, like 2009 or something like that, that show has been going on. So we were just super inspired by these geniuses and these giants. And we thought, well, is there a way that we can sort of tell this story? You know? Yeah. And both of us are kind of from a theatery slash film uh, background. And the thing about do- doing things like film is like, you know, if you want to do something sci-fi or hugely, you know, cosmic fantasy, that takes a lot of money. Yes. And we were thinking to ourselves, like, well, we could write something the scale of what we imagine uh, that to be. But because it's just audio, <laughs> yeah, we can get like something so cool, something amazing and and be on like, a good budget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're was... able to do it on, on our little poor house budget. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the... The sound design, you can, instead of with like a theater production, you have to change the set every single time, right? But with mm-hmm, the sound yeah. design, you just change the, the sound. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're you're transported into this completely other place. And mm-hmm. so oh, y- the yeah, actually, minimal regarding- budget... Right, yeah, the middle is, is incredible. Yeah. I, I did want, Josie, I want you to say something about that too. The way that you direct with sound design is so cool too. Do you want to talk about how like... um. You use like footsteps, like very intentionally and things like that. Oh yes, yes. Um, so we've kind of developed this process, especially we've even better in season two about this, where um, I kind of put together a very loose skeleton of just the dialogue. Um, Michael then goes and and throws in a bunch of sound files because he's he's just so good at like bam, 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 um, like all of this amazing sound and then then basically we go back and i kind of like to go through like a fine fine tooth comb and just we're very specific about things so even footsteps we don't just like to throw in footsteps and go like okay yeah they're walking it's like you know they're an actor um if there's a turning point in the scene where they they turn to each other and say a specific thing and it's important that's a moment where you stop walking because right. you know you want you want the audience to go to realize like that's a beat right there that's a um that's a significant dramatic beat where something happened and and there's an intentional shift in the mood so something like as simple as footsteps then becomes like part of the drama of the scene yeah and the same thing happens with other immersive things like even like ambient bird noises or whatever yeah. you want to like let the audience know specifically like when that happens and and that's kind of like Joseph's idea it was more than just like have it in there but when to have it in there as a technique for directing and I was like that's so cool yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah I love that you you guys have the the ability to split the the work amongst the two of you. Yeah. And I'm just doing it all by myself. <laughs> oh. oh, our heart goes oh. out to you, man, because it is it is a long it is a long job and Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It, we you, know. The hours just go away. You're like, I've been working on this for 5 hours. <laughs> what? What's and going on? You know? And then you go back, you replay everything, all the differences between it's like <laughs> oh, I, I hear a difference that I had put there th- five hours ago. Like, wait, wait yeah. for me. Like, very <laughs> slow, totally. slow process. It's so satisfying yeah. when you have something that exists and mm-hmm. you spent so much time on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just so cool. Mm-hmm. Do you ever find certain scenes where it's like, that is the scene. That's the sound. That's the sound scene, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or is it just like I'd... all of it? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And there's moments that you like imagined in your head and then they perfectly come out. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just magic, right? When the the writing and the performance and everything just kind of hits together, you just go, oh, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Yes. Yeah. And it, just, yeah. and it just hits. There's, I think, a few, there's a few of those in this season. Yeah. Uh, which is out already. Which is out already. When, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think... Could, could we should we say certain? Oh, we could even, yeah. Yeah, I think the... I won't tell anybody. We're okay. We're all great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think the the uh basically the clim- climactic fight between Etsy and and the, ent- the, bad, the entity, the entity that, that we're not going to quite we're not going to quite mention um <laughs> um is just a scene that's so fun. I mean, and that was that was the major thing when we were editing that scene. We're just like we're just having so much. fun fun with this yeah. it's like a crazy cool like fun scene yeah, man right. <laughs> yeah the storyline takes place in new orleans and in yes. thereabouts what connection do you guys have with new orleans do you have any connection with new orleans? we do we do yeah well not a not a not very a huge, huge co- co- uh, connection with new orleans but we went to go visit this must have been like two years ago yeah yeah and it was just on a whim we um Went down because the flight tickets, the flights were really cheap. Were really cheap. It's with Spirit. It was like something like forty dollars. Forty dollars round trip. We later discovered it was that cheap because it was hurricane season, <laughs> and uh, we actually so flew you down went in August or something. We did, we did, yeah. and we uh, flew down. And then on the news, as like... we were like walking through the airport, they were like, "There's a hurricane coming up on like the you coast." You might die. And we were like, "Oh no!" So in the Uber, as we were going away from the airport, we actually asked the Uber uh, gal that was driving, and we were like, "Are we gonna be okay? Like, is there gonna be a hurricane? We're all gonna die?" And she's like. You know what we do, man? She's like, we just like look around, and if like the locals are just kind of chill, we're just like, eh, we're gonna buy some more food and we'll be good. Um, I was like, what? You maniacs! I love you. And what was what was so cool is they have that like good relationship with Doom like that. There's yeah. this kind of rising, always this sort of like suspense in that city. Yeah. And they're just like living their best life, and I love it. They're just so cool like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyways, we went down there and we were having a blast just sort of experiencing the world and seeing this awesome Victorian Gothic um, architecture. And we thought, wow, there feels like there's a story here. It feels like mm-hmm. this is a really cool world, you know? Yeah, I think just um, it, it is one of those places that has this magic. It has this like magic to the to the air there. And, and I think both of us were sort of blown away and kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it just, it, it, uh, subverted our expectations it was yeah. it was like like we didn't really know what new orleans was gonna be like and we were just like oh this place it's magic yeah <laughs> and at the same time we were reading a lot of lovecraft at the same time oh yeah 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 yeah. so we're reading a lot of lovecraft we kind of just get into that and we just were like you know what lovecraft slash new orleans that's a great that's idea a great combo <laughs> yeah and um so that was yes. ten years ago. Is that that something? Oh, that's that was been, two that was, years. That was ago. A two, two oh, years ago. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, no, that makes can... that makes more sense. I'm like, <laughs> ten years. Have you just been <laughs> stewing on it for the last <laughs> yeah. eight years? And then years, we brooded then for eight, eight years. years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I actually lived in New Orleans for five years. Whoa, no way! Yeah. Did you, John? So cool, man. What yeah. part? Where'd you live? Uh, in a bubble. So we didn't do a whole lot of exploration or anything. I actually did more exploration as an adult going back and visiting as a tourist than I ever did actually there. But I have gone to the French Quarter and done a bunch of that stuff and not realized what it was and what history and everything went into it. I've even taken a ghost tour. Have you guys taken any ghost tours? You know, ghost tour, no. No. We did take a couple tours, one of which was the Victorian Apothecary Shop, which which is is what directly inspired Topher's work. And apparently that place is haunted. Yeah, so and of I course. fainted, which is what? what what like okay. Apparently, girls are girls walk into there, and and sometimes they faint because of like the history there. Yeah, and that's what happened and to me. I like went woo, and they had to take me out of the shop. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I didn't know about the the history of that till like a year later. Yeah. and somebody said that, and somebody said, "Yeah, did you know that? Like all, all, all the time, like girls walk in there and faint." And I'm like, "You're like whoa, <laughs> whoa, so spooky." That's that's really cool, and. You know, New Orleans is just one of those places where, like you were saying, it's such a it's such a magical place. And going back there and seeing all of the all of the architecture, like you were saying, and everything, it just seems like it it has so much that's that's there. But I've lived there during some hurricane seasons. Oh yeah. And when I say I lived there, my 
my father was more uh more of the type of person who was like okay hurricane's coming we're like 20 feet below sea level we're leaving so we were we were the ones who left and then you know it wasn't until a few years after we had moved from there that katrina had hit and then it's like yeah that would have sucked to have been a part of that would have been devastating Yeah. yeah Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's good to be cautious, especially when you live 20 feet under. <laughs> yeah, 20 feet below sea level on the coast. Yeah. yeah. Did you visit any of the cemeteries over there? Yes, we sure, we sure did. did. Yeah. Because yeah. the cemeteries, I mean, it's like an iconic, like, vis- like it's sort of an iconic look to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to see what those were about. And they're cool. They're spooky. So they're cool. all above ground, if people don't know. And um they definitely have that sort of aesthetic of New Orleans-y kind of And cemetery. my favorite fact that we learned was that the water, um, like, seeps into the, the graves. And they um, apparently you can hear the bones rattling around in there. Like, yeah. <laughs> as the, as you know, like, as the water comes in, you can hear the bones of the, you know, the dead rattling around. Yeah, and then, and, that's, and like, that's, you know, why people were like, oh, it's haunted, because they could literally hear... <laughs> The Which would be a horrifying bones. sound. Yeah. yeah. The rattling bones in a cemetery is like the sound you don't want to hear. The sound like, you absolutely <laughs> don't want to hear. Ever, right? <laughs> that is crazy. I, I actually didn't didn't hear that, but... Well, unless it's, it's unless it's, someone lied to me about that, but that's what I heard. It's, I it's not them. about the, the reality of the issue, regardless of whether it's true or not. It's just, it's that story, and it definitely left an impression for you. But that place, <laughs> yeah. it is crazy. And, you know, I even saw... Um, you probably saw Nick Cage's uh, grave site, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy that we, we, we saw a living person in the grave site. Um, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that bizarre? It's yeah. so weird. But a lot but, of celebrities love New Orleans. They, there's like a couple that are like distantly in that world that hang out every once in a while. But yeah, Nick Cage's gravestone's definitely like a site. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get your character names from? Wow. Good question. Well, I think we like to have characters that are just a little yeah. different and a little weird. Um, do you have <laughs> um Topher came from somebody that you know right? <laughs> I did yeah uh, so if yeah. Topher's listening there's a guy Topher's listening show notes to Topher a, yeah there's a guy named Topher he was this awesome dude that and was he lived in my in New Orleans, right? he lives in New Orleans yeah. for a bit yeah um he was in my acting class over in California and he's just like one of the coolest dudes I ever met we had this great scenes together but anyways um yeah so I stole his name <laughs> Summers is not his name, so I, I definitely just took his first name. Um, Etsy came from a typo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it was, um, we were looking at a name, and it was something like Esty or something like that. And then I I just misread, I read it Etsy, and I was like, that's kind of unique. I mean, it's the name of the online store, but, like, that's a cool name. And so then we're like, okay, let's, let's you know, let's play with that for a while. And we did the whole season, and then I went back and looked at the name, the original name that I was inspired by, and I was like, it's S S D. You're like, that's not Etsy at all. <laughs> Not even close to so we basically we kind of made that up, but it is the same as the yeah, online the store. Online so store. yeah, but we do like um, the names to stand out. That yeah, way, like yeah. when someone says like, "Oh, it's like Etsy and Topher, or like Topher and Simone," like yeah, they just there's They're a, a chance of, of people than... knowing more than just like like John, John and Sarah. Although I, uh-huh. your name's John, though, John. So sorry. Wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was attacking your name. <laughs> don't, yeah. Sorry. Don't want well, like, anybody who's just boring or anything. <laughs> no. Jeez. Oh no, my bad. No, what we mean is that it's so amazing. That's that, true. Like everyone wants that name. Yeah, obviously. And not we can't all have that name. Yeah, that's true. We can't all have the name. So the reason why I ask where you're getting your names from, I don't know if you guys have read the Casey Whalen's book, Bombs Always Beep. Have you guys oh, written, not read yet. it? No. no, but it's that new book that he wrote. I know. It's all about audio drama, and it's this cool. new book that he wrote. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the book on audio dramas that's, that's current. And I've, I've literally looked. I've scoured all over the earth to find any books that are also relevant and everything else is either BBC or it's mm-hmm. stuff that was for old time radio, like yeah. kind of a, a method of, of writing. But he says that his favorite method of of getting names is actually going and visiting like cemeteries oh, and oh, taking names wow. off of the off of those. Now, obviously, he's not going to use the first and last names, but of course. He'll, of course. he'll take some first names and some last names. 
And I started doing that, and I did that with a series, Universe 25, and very, very happy with the results so far because it's, you get to pick the best names and and very unique and everything and, you know, kind of revive some names that may have, you know, just stopped like like That's Harriet true. for instance yeah it's like yeah you don't meet anybody named Harriet anymore so now yeah. you can, you can yeah. bring that and that way you also don't have to worry about accidentally naming it by somebody in your subconscious yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's so cool. That's, that's that part amazing. of that process would be fun to do to kind yeah. of just walk through. And that's what J.K. Graves. Rowling did too, right? Yes, yeah. she did. Yeah, because there's actually a cemetery, I think it's in Scotland, where like there's so many Harry there's Potter so many names. Harry Potter names in, in the... the cemetery. Yeah. Huh. Well, I know that she did uh, KC actually goes back into talking about how she gets her names in J.K. Rowling and how it's uh like Dumbledore, Dumble being a uh, uh, like probably scottish or something for bumble for like bumblebee and she imagines like how he would hum it probably sounded like a like a bumblebee or all of it like oh so she has all of these like intricate details as to why uh, she'll name somebody something oh i love that that's cool because there's so much intention behind the scenes with artists you know they think about all those little moments that's so cool how are you recording your season yeah very simple so we bring people uh, in house mm-hmm. and we have them record their show uh, just a- sort of around our little home setup here. Yeah, and um, it's very simple. It's very simple. <laughs> we do it very fast. People will ha- will be brought in for just a couple of hours. Um, the actors for mm-hmm. the whole season really, and um, we'll have written everything out because we're we're a scripted show, so we make sure everything is is well uh, written and we know exactly where we're going. Yeah, we we complete all the episodes before we start recording. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so that we or, know you know write all the episodes before we right. start recording. Right, there's definitely some revision that happens because mm-hmm. we'll realize scenes aren't working or we'll realize that character motivations just skip or jump too much and so then there's definitely a sort of a uh, kind of a mad panic um to to fix and to to create um make sure that the scenes are, are flowing again so we'll definitely do some rewriting and, and a dash of re-recording but but really even like for the principal uh, recorders we have them out for like just a number of hours and um mm-hmm. then we do just a lot of post-production so once we have those audio files we really just sort of work our way through um all those files slowly and make sure that that there's good scene there and there's like good chemistry mm-hmm and I think I like to focus. I, I'm the one. I kind of direct them. So I we like to uh, do a, a couple takes, and I like to just kind of see what the actor has, <laughs> their initial instincts, and then we might go back and and kind of go like, okay, this line, like this is your intent intention behind that, yeah, or this like, is this line is very important because it's gonna it's gonna pay off later and stuff like that. So it's a very simple process. Right. What's really great about the two of us um, also voicing is if there is something that's sort of a challenge we are have the ability to do a lot of rewriting for our own voice Mm -hmm. so if we're in a scene and we realize like oh this isn't working we can sometimes take the audio of that that actor and then sort of customize our performance to match and just Mm -hmm. make the scene really work around their performances so peeling back the the layers a little bit more so how are you guys casting your crew for them to be local yeah, well, um, because we we come from a theatrical background, uh, we studied theater together at uh, in college. Um, we have a lot. Fortunately, we have a lot of actor friends. Hey, um, and uh, so basically, we um, we had some people kind of audition. Some people we said like, hey, you know, would you be interested in this role? Like, would you be interested in auditioning? Um, some people we just precast because we were like like Dan Johnson, who plays both Officer Mason and Necroman. Um, we're just like. Give it to Dan. He's amazing. He's, he's a genius. <laughs> um, he really is. So, uh, uh, yeah. So um, we we know all, almost the whole cast are just our friends who are amazing actors. And uh, uh, Michigan, where we live in Southeast Michigan, is a like kind of an unknown hub for uh, some really good theater companies. Um, a little bit of film, but but a lot of theater. And the the talent is is really good. Yeah, some just great actors. So mm-hmm. yeah, we just have all Michigan talent, and um, they're people that we've worked professionally with at some mm-hmm. of the local theaters, yeah. and just people that we we love and we trust, and uh-huh. they're really great. Yeah. So theaters took a really big hit when COVID took oh, over. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely. I have a coworker who who is the set designer for a local mm. local playhouse, and cool. He's just feeling feeling really lost because this isn't his environment his environment was backstage making all of the all of the stage props and everything mm-hmm. so i imagine that that 
theater on over in Michigan also took a hit. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they closed down for a whole year, right? Yeah. And without a really definite knowing on how they're going to bounce back. So mm-hmm. there, unfortunately, were a couple of theaters that actually did have to, to uh, close, to close yeah. yeah, and say that that's uh, the end of their time. But uh, definitely a, a few really like um, strong survivors who are fighting their way through and mm-hmm. that are still going to make it through to the end. And it's it's really starting to come back already, which is a wonderful thing. And there's there's a lot of hope in that to see that mm-hmm. uh, – that it's coming back and it's it's going to be all right. Yeah. Are you are you union members? No, we're actually not. Um, I am actually a part of a union, um, AGVA, which is the Variety Act union, but that's uh, for a different thing. It's like actually the same union as the Rockettes, but I I'm not a Rocket. Um, but <laughs> that's uh, part of. You're, you're not. I'm not. You, know, you look know. fantastic. You, yeah. You might be surprised. You might have thought by looking at me. No. Um, but. Um, so I'm part of that union, but that is not an AGVA or a um, like AA or any sort of union like that. Interesting. I, I know that that with the the guilds, all the unions and everything, they're kind of figuring out what New York has to say before they're doing anything. So I mm-hmm. just didn't know if that was something that was taking effect with you guys, or if you guys were in a in a playhouse or in a theater that wasn't doing um, following that. Yeah, we not. Um, yeah, don't super know where they're where they're going. Uh, with that, it's it is kind of like people all just have their eyes open. They're all trying to figure it out and just sort of adapt the, the best they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were any differences between how you recorded during uh, in 2019 versus 2020? Yes, we did. We did do. Um, we kind of put safety on the top thing for this season here. Last year, we had actors come in together uh, very often if they shared a scene together they would come in together and record together this year we did everyone individually and that was a lot more work on the the back end for us of with editing and splicing all these actors voices together Um, but we did we just wanted to be really really safe and we wanted them to feel very comfortable doing it we didn't want anyone to be like oh i don't know if i want to be a part of this because i'm you know i'm (laughs) Uh, like scared of Absolutely. catching COVID, you know. Yeah. Um. So basically, we we just kind of sanitized the whole space, uh, our whole recording space. We wore masks. We allowed the actors to mask off, just be with just them in the microphone. I or Michael would be record would be kind of from a distance, feeding the other the other character lines. No matter who that character was, we would just kind of say their lines so that they could they could still play in play uh, against another actor but but yeah we would just focus on individual takes of each actor yeah and i actually have to throw josie a compliment here there is uh three characters that it's already aired um but they are these sort of like millennials that come into oh, etsy's tourists, yeah. yeah that come into etsy's place of work they never met each other and what's so cool in that scene is they have all this energy of like like let's do this let's take a selfie look at the shrine look at these spooky things and they're saying all these things to each other and they never met they sound like they're in the same room and they're they're like these best friends forever and i'm just like blown away with the mixing that Josie did to make those characters work it's just cool that's really cool no i don't have to worry about social distancing because i literally have like thousands of miles between myself and the other voice actors because yeah, we are, yeah. yeah we, Just talk yeah. about that so you are do uh re- do remote right you yeah. have them bring in cool yeah so like we're doing right now we have our individual recording setups and yeah. i'll have everybody record their own their own session on their remote location right but we still do it kind of like theater in that we're doing it in real time so we'll do it on discord oh, so cool. and we see each other and then we can play off of each other's attitudes and everything. And when I say yeah. we, I mean they can. I I have nothing to do with <laughs> um all of all of mine is done in post and I just I literally just do a line or two in every episode just so I'm I'm there. But oh, it's that's cool. fun. yeah, for sure. Not... Little cameo performance. <laughs> yeah. I I'm following the uh, the Stan Lee of uh of Oh nice. <laughs> yeah. Great. So we don't have to worry about any of that but we also do have to worry about all of our individual recordings making sure that we're all in that we're all recording because mm-hmm. it would suck if you get all the way through a, an entire episode and then you realize oh i never hit record on yes has that ever happened um, before so there were times when I, so we'll generally do like two records for every episode and then with the second 
the second time i'm a little bit pickier and I'm, I'm like let's do that line a little bit different and let's change that and then so i generally don't have anything to do with the first recording unless none of the the second takes worked right and there have been i think on two occasions where people had forgotten to record the first time and because i do it on two different records and i'm reminding people okay go ahead and hit pause on this or stop on this save that and then drop that that file in and then let's get ready to record on the next one and they're like oh i never started to record good thing you reminded me for the second one so yeah that's a great way to re-remind them yeah Yeah, that's really Uh smart yeah yeah well thanks i like being called smart um yeah (laughs) yeah that's well hey i mean it's working right your show is really cool and it's It's very dynamic. I just love that you have so many like worlds that you explore throughout the show. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Never know what's happening. So So I I mentioned that Mercury Theater Podcast is like my playground, right? So I'm able to work with all of these different sounds and everything. I can just, I can go from episode to episode and I have no relation whatsoever to each other that we know of yet. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, Oh, ho, ho. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> so by the time this comes out it'll be probably right after this episode they'll all uh all tie in and cool like really by cool. a very very small way and you know people can take it or leave it and decide whether it actually does all connect or if it doesn't mm. but that definitely was not a thought process of mine but an anthology is a fun way to go in one respect but because i'm limited to like 30 minutes for every episode. I have to build the character, have to build the scene, have to build the the arc and everything yeah. and I have to have to have it all concluded in 30 minutes time. And that doesn't sound very difficult until you realize that not only that, but you also have to do the research that's involved with oh, all of those yeah. different locations and everything and have some kind of semblance of some relevance of of whatever that that scene is whether it be space or in um pirates or something it's like you have to you have to have all of, all of this figured out yeah so cool but but writing writing a series i'm i'm writing the differences like i'm i'm creating a uh a blog post kind of like a guest post as to what the differences are between the writing a series versus an anthology and why it so is cool. more difficult to do one and why it's easier to do that one and the same for the other one to see what those mm-hmm. pros and cons are yeah. and writing the series for universe 25 is something that it's so exciting because i'm able to not only establish who these characters are and build a whole scene or like the whole whole world and then but I can carry on that that storyline, and I, I have a bunch of time that I can do that. Whereas with the other one, I have to kind of get some something that hopefully hooks the the listener. But it's it's just a fun process. Yeah, so cool. So Josie, Michael, if you could give any advice to an aspiring audio drama individual, what would that be? Yeah, we got tons. Honestly, I think right off the bat, the first thing I have to say is self produce and. Go for it. Tell us a story. There's a story in your head, and there's a reason that story is in your head. And I think that you're ready. Go for it. You will learn so much on the journey of just assembling it together, hearing how characters actually crunch and and feel with each other. It's just an incredible learning experience to just jump into the deep end and, and create a show. Yeah. And I would say finish your show. I mean, I know <laughs> yeah. that that sounds like kind of simplistic, but uh, so many, so often artists begin something and they have an idea and they're kind of, there's, there's this fear of, um, you know, maybe this isn't good. Maybe, um, you know, maybe if I share this with somebody, they're going to kind of make fun of me, but you kind of never know until you finish it. And then you, you actually, I say, A, finish your show, B, share it with, with somebody. Um, if that's the first thing that happens is you share it with your friend or your sister or, or something, um, it like art, art exists to be shared. Yeah. Absolutely. I think another thing to say is that uh, embracing the medium itself is a really wonderful thing. And we do this with Void where the show is designed for audio and our characters will say like, oh, do you do you hear that sound? And then 
they'll, we'll hear something like that, or we'll intentionally like give the audience a moment where they, in a very Lovecraftian way, they're like wonder what's happening around the corner, and we're we're using those ideas of the audio medium itself to like to do that. And we sometimes see shows that are they were intended to be a play, and then they were kind of just forced into audio, mm-hmm. and they work out great. But when you really embrace the medium and say, what can we do in this medium that's not like any other medium? I think those are the shows that really shine mm-hmm. and and become something like really cool. Yeah. yeah. And then uh and then I would say be be very scrappy. Um yeah. learn how to do things on a budget because you might run into later on, you might run into a situation where somebody gives you lots of money, but if you learn first how to do things on a very minimum budget, yep. then uh that's just that's going to make you a better artist and a uh your creativity your creativity is going to be forced to blossom because of yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> right. You have to you have to like um survive. And then I guess some other practical advice is when you do have a show and you've created something and you want to take it to the next level, uh there's so many cool social media outlets in which to do that. So Twitter's amazing, Reddit's amazing. These are built-in communities that are really warm in regards to audio uh, fiction, because the people there, they have so many shows that they want to listen to, mm-hmm. and the the fellow creators lift each other up in a wonderful way. Mm-hmm. So there is a community that will that will lift you up. Now, I'm not saying that there won't be some haters. There's certainly, whenever you put something out as an artist, there's criticism, and and that hurts. I mean, you feel that, and you like read the comments, yeah. and you go like, oh man, okay. Um, and those yeah. those can be really painful. But mm-hmm. I mean, there's like 10% that's that, and there's so many people that are just excited and want to hear what a new show could be. Now, that was only like 12. Do you have any others? <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey man, I'm sure we could come up with even more. There's there's so many things that we've learned along the way, and yeah. uh, we're still learning. To be oh, completely we're, honest, yeah, yeah. I think maybe that's another thing I guess is like don't don't be afraid to just like acknowledge where you are and kind of be like okay I don't know a lot but I'm learning and and then let yourself learn. Yeah. I guess another thing that has us excited about season 2 what would you ask? I was just like add this add, add this, this right. Add this. No, I'm um, liking this. Thing... This is just it's a free for all. You guys go cool. go nuts. I'll uh, we go I'll just take a nap. You let me know you, uh, you yeah. ring a bell. And you let, let me, me know, know when, when you guys are you let me know when you're just talking. I guess another thing that we we super love, and this is really like sort of season two specific, is we wanted to take some chances, and oh, yeah. um, we don't know if they're gonna play out or yeah. what the audience is gonna think. We will know now because um, know. the way it, it's played out. But there's even some like structural things, um, the way that we're telling the story that are just really bold and weird, mm-hmm. and we hope that they like them. But what's cool is we feel like we tried something very weird and and strange in this mm-hmm. next season, and. If anything, we at least tried to go in a weird direction mm-hmm. and wanted to provide something that was just a new experience for our listeners. So yeah. um, I think that's a good advice. We're going to let you know. I mean, if that's we'll good advice. We'll let you know if that's good but advice or not. It feels like good advice. You know, it feels like you should always try to push your characters into different places and, yeah. and sort of strive to be, you know, mm-hmm. to be in a different environment and to, to go different places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you guys attended any pod cons or anything? Oh, not man. yet. You know what? Not yet. We were signed up to, and we were going to go to a couple of them. But COVID and ruined COVID, it. COVID ruined it. Yeah. So we were absolutely going to go to the Here Now. There was another one called MadCon that we were going to go to. I yeah. think it's in Maine. But all of them got sh- shut down. Mm-hmm. So we went to some online ones, and yeah. they were basically like Zoom calls, and a bunch of creators hopped on. And it was really satisfying to say, hey, we do Call the Void. And then there were and some people nods. were like, oh. They're like, and oh, we're like, yeah. oh, you we're like, know who we are. You know who we are, <laughs> which was really cool. Yeah. But no, we haven't. Have you been to any um, cons and things? I I have the first one scheduled. Well, okay. So I, I've i submitted to a bunch of the film festivals and podcast yeah, festivals cool. and everything. So we'll determine whether it makes sense to to go to any of those, depending on like results, like finalists and whatnot. Excellent. But I have... The podcast movement is doing one in Nashville, Tennessee. Of course. So right, yeah. I'm going to that in August. And oh, cool. I'm excited oh, about yeah, that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Yes, th- there's that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You guys should go. And then we can like, see each other in person. Yeah. Actually, you know what? <laughs> That's a really good idea. I was just talking we were just talking about, about going to Nashville. Going to Nashville. We should go to That'd be really cool, man. Um, Get some barbecue. Okay. L- <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Say the name of it one more yeah, time. Yeah, say it's the podcast, name of it. We got to write this down. Movement. Podcast um, movement. Nashville, okay. Tennessee. Yeah, I've seen it. It's one of those things, like we talked earlier, but you're constantly Googling and trying to find yeah. out where can you you know, send your show out to. And um, I have seen Podcast Movement. That's like a, I think it must have been on their website. Yeah. So I don't know if that one's one that you can actually like 
if that one's a submit um, your your podcast or anything. I think that it's more of a convention and they have just a bunch cool. of teaching and like their you know, like sessions and everything. But yeah. I mean I've I've submitted to be uh one of the the not panelists, but one of the people talking on Oh, like that. a speaker? Cool. Yeah. But, cool, man. Oh, nice. you know, I don't expect anything from that because I'm brand brand new to it. So I really like being new to this and it's not it's this wasn't my forte a year ago. I'm still learning something every episode that I'm doing. I still and Oh yeah. And with the series it's going to be really interesting because I'll have all of the all of the stuff done within probably a month of like a single month of recording and just in the weekends and whatnot. Whereas with it right now it's just one a month and like last month we recorded uh two, maybe three episodes. But this time it's just a matter it's gonna be like it's gonna be hard a hardcore like we're recording and then I'll be able to put everything in post and I'll do it simultaneously so I'll get all the dialogue done at the same time I'll get all the cool. all of this stuff done right and it's going to be interesting to do that because I'll now have to splice everything based on according to what episode is it's a part of whereas yeah. right now it's it's all it's all given to me in the same uh audio file yeah right for anyway. that episode that's going to yeah, yeah. So not really sure where I was going with that, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, that's just a cool, I mean, that you're right. That's like, that's a big difference that I think you're going to like, I mean, it's just going to be, it's going to feel different. Like as a, yeah. edit, as an editor, you're kind of like, okay, like just new techniques here that you kind of have to yeah. develop for, for even just like organizing sound files. That was something that we, we kind of like from season one to season two, we're like, okay, like how do we organize sound files though? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. So that's actually where I was going because it's is is it it is a new process to me. Yeah. It's a matter of figuring out how to do it. But yeah. because I'm I'm spending all of that time learning how to do it, I'm actually learning how whereas mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not being told this is your order of operations and then you just do that. It's you build your order of operations because you've learned how to do it. And it it seems like it's a lot more um it's more inclined to stick to to what you're doing. Yeah. And I, I like being new to this because I'm not confined by whatever it is that people are told in like in theater school or, or, or film school. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So right. it's it's just I'm I just do whatever I want <laughs> and you know I I can break any rule that I want because I don't know that the rules exist and right. what's the final <laughs> right. result. So it's it's going to be interesting to, you know, I, I like looking back. I don't listen to it, but I like looking back at episode one and thinking, mm -hmm. man, that really sucked. Like, honestly, like, I I don't know if you guys have listened to episode one, but it's like, yeah, that you have. But you know oh, what? But at the I'm same so time, sorry. like, thank heavens. <laughs> no, no. But thank no, heavens no, that you no, feel no, that way about yeah. your show and you know that you're growing, right? Yeah. Oh, it's because, the same for us. Yeah. Like, it'd be terrible if you listened back to episode one and yeah. you were like... And then we're like, this is better than the that thing that I have That was the best thing now. we've ever done, you know? And it's all downhill from <laughs> yeah. episode one. Like, it's it's a good thing that, like, you're constantly moving forward yeah, in that way. Right. Yeah. 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 We feel the same way. Yeah. Sometimes we listen back on episode one and we're like, oh. And we're like... We're like, we could have even just done sound reduction or like noise reduction. Yeah. That would have been better, you know? Or plot things. Or, we're yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Just things that we just never would have thought of while we were sort of throwing it all yeah. together. Yeah. And there's just, you don't get better unless you do it, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? We really believe that. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. kind of like the trial by fire artists. The trial by fire artists. <laughs> you know, we love that. Like, just jump just, in, man, and see what happens. Just jump in, man. <laughs> yeah. And I I started off and I, I told the people I was working with that – we just needed to get episode one out. Like it's just, mm. just throw it yeah. out there because then I know that the, the works is behind us. Right. Yeah. And absolutely. then it's just progressing from there on. But I knew that if I didn't do episode one, there's not going to be an episode two. And that's, so I don't know if you know, there's a, an old time radio show called let's pretend. Oh and yeah, absolutely. You do. How do you know? Yeah, this? I, I, I've never heard of how it. Old I think are you? I've heard of let's pretend. How old am I? I'm 28. Um, am I too young? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of it. We're not supposed to know this. Um, but oh, it's, really? Do you know the Cream of Wheat song? Cream. Okay, of maybe wheat I don't. So good to, okay. Um, okay, maybe the, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. John. For, uh, <laughs> cream. I don't. I don't know what it is. 
The first time that I actually tried to do any recording was to a Let's Pretend script. And I was like, you know, I just needed to get get it out there. And I ended up not using it. But I took something else and I adapted that. So Nikki Sketch and the, uh, the Big Top uh, Bears, that one I had done. It was actually a, a Dick Tracy episode. And I had just adapted that it. and made okay. it so it was like I changed all the names and changed some of the some of the content. And it was just like it was another one of those like, let's get this done. Let's see how this works. And then we when we went yeah. from there. But I'll tell you what, it's actually harder to adapt a script than it is to write your own. So <sighs> don't uh, don't do it. <laughs> so don't do it. So don't do it. So Michael and Josie Herman, thank you very, very much for joining me. Absolutely. Absolutely. This was awesome. Honestly, John, yeah, this yeah, was so John, good, man. It was so, so good to hang with you. Thank you for having us on here. We're just really yeah. honored that you wanted to talk with us. So Yeah. Yeah, that's super yeah, cool. Absolutely. It's fantastic to be able to put a face with a name and faces with voices. And honestly, so I think that Josie's face is the one that's used in Call of the Void. Is that right? Yes, 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 that's correct. Yeah. It is. Yep. So she's yeah. the promo face, and she did that all editing herself. Oh yeah, I I do graphic design as well. So I I do all of the the design and stuff out for the show. Yeah, for social media and that kind of stuff too. And uh, yeah. So you want to redo the Mercury Theater podcast cover art? If, I mean, if you <laughs> if you want to if you want to hire if you yeah. want to hire me, yeah, for sure. <laughs> very very well worded. I like that. Um, <laughs> If you would like to follow their podcast, The Call of the Void, you should definitely check it out wherever podcasts are found. They are also found on Twitter at Call of the Void P, Facebook page Call of the Void Podcast, and their website acornartsandentertainment.com forward slash the void. Links to these and more in the show notes. If you would like to have attribution in an upcoming drama episode as a stagehand, all you need to do is write us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or wherever else you can. A screenshot will ensure that we get that. Just email that to me at john at mercurytheaterpodcast.com in case I didn't see it first. That email address you can also send fan mail if you are so inclined. Find us on pretty much all of the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as Mercury Theater Podcast. I can't afford not to thank our patrons Clay Colvin, Ann Robinson, and Chad Bell for their financial support. For as little as two bucks a month, you too can have access to exclusive content like scripts, early episodes, outtakes, and more by finding us on Patreon. On June 28th, we'll be premiering the teased episode Volstead Action. Until then, I'm John Badger. <laughs>